Load Builder. Uh, Load Builder is a tool that helps you bring loads to your nodes. Okay, so you can, we specified the very first day how important uh, accurate loads are going to be for our system. Um, so you can get data from customer meters for your potable water. And that's what we call here a customer billing data or bottom up approach. Uh, the problem with that is that you don't measure things like inflow infiltration and that usually you get a monthly reading for a user but you know that's better than nothing um, other people prefer to do a top-down approach so they start with how much water is coming into the wastewater treatment plant and then they distribute it uh, between all the nodes that they have um, because that could include INI, but then how much do you allocate to one user, user versus another um, could become, you know, also uh, problematic. So you can use one or both or a combination of those approaches, uh, which is kind of what people end up doing. So they use the granular uh, billing data for most of the manholes, most of the nodes, and then they make sure that uh, what comes up equals what is coming into the treatment plant and if there is a, a difference that typically is the INI and then you figure out how you distribute just the INI throughout the network. Okay, um, so however you want to do that, this load builder uh, can help you. You can bring point data like the customer um, billing records directly to your nodes you can bring polygon flow data to a node. Uh, you can also bring polygon land use or populated population data to a node. Here is an example of um, metering data. So your billing data, uh, how those are the green lines, the blue dots, the, the green dots, the blue dots represent your manholes. Um, so there are different ways that you can assign it either to the nearest node or to the nearest pipe. So when we say nearest pipe, it doesn't mean that the flows are going to be assigned to the pipe. Is it that goes to the nearest pipe and then finds the closest manhole. So it would be assigned to the manhole um, anyway, but just kind of taking a different path to get there. Um, you could also create these polygons around each of your manholes and whatever um, billing information you have within that polygon would be associated to the manhole. Uh, and if you choose to do this, there's a tool called Thesen Polygon that can create each of these polygons per manhole for you. Okay, uh, what happens when you bring customer information system data or metering billing data? Um, it's the geocoding because sometimes the uh, utility would give you an Excel spreadsheet with addresses, but um, Sir James doesn't know what that means. So you need to convert that to X and Y coordinates um, so that we can um, overlap your model and the location of those billing records. Um, so this water, as we mentioned, accounts for irrigation use. This is typically the records that we have is for potable water and not 100% of that becomes wastewater. So you got to come up with a rate as to how much you think becomes wastewater. Um, all the meters are not read on the same day. So you're not really looking at the same 30 day period, which might be different, but you know, on average, it might not be a big deal. So this is what raw billing data would look like. Uh, when the meter was read, what was the reading? And, you know, we compare it with the previous reading and figure out how many gallons were uh, consumed in that period. And then you have, you know, how much the person paid. You can figure out the usage by dividing the number of gallons billed divided 
in the days in that billing cycle. And that's actually the number that we're interested in. What is the gallon per day usage for that customer? Um, what if you have a polygon that tells you, uh, okay, all the users in this area consumed 100 gallons, 100 gallons per minute. Um, how are you going to divide it between your manholes? You can do it proportional by area, or you can say proportional by population if you were to know how many people are in each of those polygons. Or you can simply say divide it equally, you know, give everybody 20 gallons per minute because there's five nodes. Um, you could also have uh, different flow polygons. You intercept it with your thesen or node polygons and then proportionally uh, assign the node demand or load. Um, what if you don't have any of that? What if this is for a system that hasn't built, been built yet? Uh, you have to project what the land use uh, or the population is going to be and then infer what the flow would be. Um, so you can use things like census data, planning district, or any information that you have, and then you come up with a density. So you say, okay, I know how many people will be in this polygon, but now I need to figure out what is the average per person per day usage. So you can find some literature values uh, around or come up with them for your own system. Um, and then if you are going to use those node service polygons, basically the polygon around each of your manholes. Um, you can create it outside or you can use our Thesen polygon tool, uh, which works like this. This shows you your network with pipes and manholes. And then it creates the circles around them, it finds the bisecting points, and then it produces these um, these and polygons for each of your nodes. All right. Um, so if you do decide that you're going to use your um, GIS data, uh, Load Builder accepts uh, shape files only. Uh, so you would open that tool, then select which of all the possible methods. We're going to look at this in the workshop. So you browse to your file and then get a preview of what the loads would be. Uh, within Load Builder, you can assign multipliers. Again, if you think you're using, uh, you're assuming 80% of the data, for example, uh, is what you will be using for wastewater flows, then you can apply that directly here. Uh, you can apply patterns as well. And this is what the outcome would be. Uh, for a particular manhole, what would be the load if you have it in your uh, source shape files, for example, broken down as commercial, residential, industrial. You can also use that and assign that to your own um, use pattern as well. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.